Welcome to uh, the library's history series. Today we have Anna Belil with us, uh, one of our oldest residents of Somerset, and we're looking forward to hearing about her life and um, all the things that she experienced and maybe some of what she knows about the history of Somerset. So I'll turn it over to Anna. Good morning, my friends. And I have some great news to all to tell you. I am so glad you came to see me and to recall my life. I was born in Somerset, Wisconsin on August 18, 1909. I was born two miles from Somerset. My dad was a farmer and we had 15 cows and we raised corn and we made sorghum. Sorghum was just like corn. It was used to make syrup for our pancakes. And we had, uh, we had a lot of apple trees. So in that apple trees, we would, would um, uh, dry our apples and we would put cheesecloth on them so that they would dry and then we would use them in the winter and when they're dried. Um, we would string them on the cheesecloth and the cheese. My mother died with childbirth during the war in 1917. My dad remarried 1917, October 14. We had the most wonderful stepmother I could ever recall. She was a doll. She was a beautiful woman too. Not only that, but she was a doll. But um, then uh, the deal is that um, um, she was good to us. She made us clothes from um, different people. She made us clothes from, we had a neighbor, the lady, this is sad to say, today we've got the Helen Laundry that was buried. And you know that they were our neighbor, our first neighbor. And this is very sad to say today that we have to have something like this to happen for when I had to recall it. And um, you know one thing, like I said, this is something that um, you never forget. You know, that they were so good to us. And you know, everybody has been so good. And um, my dad remarried in 1917, October 14th, 1917. My dad remarried. Stepmom have children? Yeah. Yes. Did she my stepmother, yes. She had three children. She had um, uh, Ron. No, then, mother. Those were her kids. Charlie. Charlie was Rollin a girl. Ron and the same. Paul. But Grandpa and Grandma had Aunt Yvonne, and didn't another girl die? When Grandpa married Grandma, there were three Laliers. He married there was three Laliers. Yes, yes. Right. Roland, was, Charlie, and Paul. Charlie was cook in St. Paul Hotel, yeah. and um, uh, Roland was an FBI. Right. And um, uh, uh, Paul. Paul worked for a bakery. Paul was with the bakery. Yeah. In at St. the Paul. Master Bakery in St. Paul. And then when Grandpa and Grandma got married, and uh, bringing those three to your family, they had Annie Vaughn, and didn't they have another girl, Amanda, that died? Amanda that died. But I Annie Vaughn is living. Yeah. yeah. And I tried calling her, and they don't yeah. return the call. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to say, for the sake of the tape, we're very fortunate to have Anna's oldest daughter here, Anne Marie. So we yeah. can. Um, we Keep can asking ask questions if you forget something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. You were going to tell us. Continue. Hold it. You know, um, this is about um, a friend of mine. And you know one thing? I always wanted to know where my grandmother was born. My grandmother was born, her name was Paradise. And she was born in, in my grandmother was born, she was vital for you. And she my great my grandmother was Margaret Margaret Paradise. And she was born in eighteen ninety-nine. And you know, th this friend of mine, this cousin of mine, we, he was always wanted to find out, but after 51 years, 
he found that we had, we were relatives. It happened to be he was in, in, in um, St. Paul, and there was a trucker there. And this trucker said, well, how come? Where are you from? And he said, well, said, I'm from uh, New Richmond, Somerset. Somerset. He said, yeah. He said, I'm from Somerset. And he said, well, have you got any relatives there? And he said, oh, yeah. He said, I have um, uh, a grandma, you know. And my grandma, Beth Alborio, this is found after 51 years, we found out that, and all the family, they had nine kids, but all the family, there's some of the kids that we didn't even know that, you know, that they. Now, can you tell us about where you were born and, and about your life? I was born. You yeah. said you were said you were born in in 1909. 1909. And uh, I was born two miles from Somerset. And do you know one thing? Like I said, that, that um, the deal is that um, uh, my dad, I said my dad was a farmer when then. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, somewhere along the line, you married somebody. Who was it that you married? I married Theodore Blue. Uh huh. When was that? In nineteen twenty-eight. Nineteen twenty-eight. Yeah, nineteen twenty-eight. Eleven, thirteen, twenty. Oh, and um, I'm guessing you had some children. We have the oldest daughter here. Yeah, my oldest daughter is here. My son is here too. Okay. Can you tell us who your children were? And Bob Lubick from Stillwater. Okay. And Bob Belil from Somerset. His wife, Barbara, is coming in, <laughs> and Teddy is my grandson. Uh -huh. Shirley is my grand, uh, my daughter-in-law. I have a wonderful family. If it wouldn't be for my family, I don't know what I would do today. Yeah, you do have a wonderful family. Yeah, and I have brought different pictures of different uh, of my family. The one because I lost Andy, and uh, Tom. So. Tommy. Tommy. And Tommy? And I lost Tommy. Uh -huh. yep. Now, when you were first married, where did you live, and how did you and Theodora make a living? Well, we had bees. We had 200 hives of bees. We had four or five cows. And you and lived just on the edge of town, right? Yes, yeah, right on the edge of town. Uh -huh. I still own the, 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 the property. Okay. Yeah. And um, we had uh, five acres of, uh, of uh, two acres of, of uh, strawberries, and we would sell the strawberries. We got for 16 quart um, um, uh, case of strawberries. We made our own cartons. They were quart, like quart cakes. They were wood, little wooden cases. We would made that, and then we had um, uh, uh, we had two cows, and we bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I shine. Yeah, didn't you have a dairy also? We oh, had that the dairy, came later. Oh, did the dairy come later? Oh, we yeah. Had, we had the dairy for uh, 30, about 30 years we had the dairy in oh, Somerset. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't quite understand what... Uh, when the dairy came and uh, well, in connection with the we moonshine. We saw, <laughs> I was four <laughs> years saw. old and I remember delivering a quart of milk, which was four cents, and they'd put a penny in the bottle. So I'd leave a new bottle of milk and take the empty bottle with the penny in it. So uh -huh. it was four cents. I don't remember what year, but I was tiny. Oh. Four and five years old. What was the name of the dairy? Somerset. What did you call the dairy? Somerset, Somerset dairy. dairy. Somerset Dairy. Somerset Dairy. The telephone and number then was 439. Four four <laughs> <laughs> yes, it the was. The telephone number was what? 439M. Four four three three M. Four three M? Yep. Oh. It was on the <laughs> truck. <memory. laughs> we, um, He's right. Tell, him, tell him what yeah, happened, Ma, when you were building the house. Yeah, I was a baby in the kitchen <clears throat> in the crib, and you got robbed. 
No, that wasn't the gunshot. When you were building the house and we got robbed. You got robbed. Tell that story. Yeah. Well, well uh, my husband took the uh, deer rifle and he shot with him, a shot after them until he could see they put the lights on and they they put the lights on. They would and then they take the lights off. And um, we found out that at four o'clock in the morning, this um, uh, fellow had been shot and was taken to the uh, hospital in the cities. And they found out that he was um, um, the one that was uh, we had shot. And, <laughs> uh -huh. and he was a big wheel. His mother owned and um, run the post office in Minneapolis. Oh. And um, uh, he was a big wheel there. And you know, but he was a crook. <laughs> did he get, what did he get when he robbed your house? Did he get money or something else? At first, it, no, that first time they did get any money. The, the first time you told me, Mother, and Dad related this also, is that I was six, six weeks old. Excuse me, it's probably my daughter. Hello. <laughs> throw that phone away. Yeah, throw the phone away. What? Oh, I was six weeks old. I have to go to I was, was six weeks old, and they were cleaning the new floor. They built a brand new house on the farm where we were, where I was born and raised. Somebody came to the door from the front porch, which is unusual, and they were scraping the floor, so they were, the door was open, and it was warm enough out. And they said, give us your money. And Open the, the safe, safe and don't forget the combination. That's right. <laughs> and their dad said they got $500. Oh, my gracious. Oh, and, but then the shooting part came later, and we had the bullet marks on the doors for a long time. The guy came to the door. My dad said, what do you want? He said, open the door. And my father said, like hell I will. <laughs> he said, you better go or I'll shoot. They shot first. Then he shot. Bob, you can Busy finish woman. the morning show. Oh, yeah. hot seat. <laughs> she didn't tell you they were they were robbed. At, you were robbed, what, three times? Yeah. Because the one time they took him, they said, and they took him south of town, and they tied him up and yeah. left him off south of town here. Now we have Bob, who looks like, on the list, he's a middle child. Somewhere middle. in the middle, right? Bob, you were? Yep. <laughs> this becomes the hot Yeah, why didn't you come join us up front? <laughs> yeah, and she, they also, uh, that one time they tied him up at home, uh, Ike Grigsby, which was a colored man that had a joint out here, he used to hunt with my dad, and he was a plasterer. Uh -huh. And he took the trowel and kept working it on the ropes till he cut the ropes. And that's how they got away. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, they used to have quite a time with uh, the with time. Like, uh, but the time that they, um, Rosa Lemire told me, she said, um, uh, I'll be there at 9 o'clock tonight. <clears throat> and at 9 o'clock at night, uh, here comes a, a guy with a, um, a gun. <laughs> and he said, Open the safe and don't forget the combination. And we had $500 in the safe. We had just gotten paid from the, the, uh, from the, uh, the um, um, thrashing. Uh -huh. oh. And um, they knew that you had money then. They knew we had money because we had gotten paid from mm -hmm. the, the, the well, farmer. Dad also bought, uh, he bought uh, the sugar by the carloads. And see, his excuse was, he could he'd feed the bees through the winter, and that's why he needed a carload of sugar. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the truth was, he used it for moonshine. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. That's and he was almost he'd help out other people. He was almost like a distributor. You know that then, <laughs> when when we Milk were when we were boot, <laughs> shady. boot legging, and, and the feds wouldn't come and raid us because we had bees and they won't go by the bees. <laughs> oh, and you know one thing, we had them. We had the the deal is that we had um um, um in between the, the that's where we had our moon. We had barrels of moon and we put them on them and the feds went. But one day when the feds came and raided us, 
It was. And you were home alone, right, one day? I was home alone, and the kids were in school. And, um, and see, they had no right of coming in to, in, um, to, um, uh, to your house. Your house. And you know one thing? The deal is that um, um, when um, it was Tom O'Brien that was the, the um, uh, sheriff of St. Clair County, and then um, uh, when um, uh, when the feds came, they when the feds came, they arrested you, didn't they? They, they arrested me, <laughs> and so Archie Mount Pettit, uh, the John's grandpa, he paid my fine. He said, um, "You know one thing." He said, she's got too many kids. She can't go into the, to the, uh, she can't go in, um, in uh, Hudson. She said, and he said, and so they, uh, they called a couple days after, and they said, the evidence against Anna Belil was any. <laughs> and uh, no, I didn't have, because it, Archie figured I had too many kids and couldn't go to the, to, to jail. jail. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tom, I used to find the barrels in the basement. Oh, yeah, we had, had barrels well, of moonshine buried all over the basement. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you hung a plumb bob. And the plumb bob would go right there. And us kids would take the pump and we'd pump uh, the air out of the hand pump and pump the dust and dirt away from the hole. And then we'd pull the cover off and then we'd pump out out the mash and then run it through the steel. <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah, they were buried under the driveway in the orchard all over. <laughs> Are they still buried there? Uh, they might be. <laughs> There's probably a couple of them left. Yeah. Yeah. Did you I heard something any about Maxine. Did you, sample that? Did you ever sample it? Is the question. I, a couple of times I put a drop on my tongue and almost burnt my tongue off. Uh, <laughs> that was really strong, right? It was oh, yeah. 95 but or But when they alcohol, too, right? See, the, the first uh, moon that came out was alcohol. Mm -hmm. And the, that um, uh, you could use for... You could use an automobile. Like <laughs> <laughs> you could run an automobile with cars. Like Everclear. <laughs> you were ahead of your time. <laughs> so I used to pay... Uh, they used to sell it for, I think, uh, 10 cents a quart, even in the 40s, at the gas station. <laughs> oh. Because they'd put it in your radiator. Uh-huh. You only think it got warm and it'd boil out, <laughs> you know, compared to the antifreeze you have today. There was another time you got raided down where Float Right Park is. The old stills and that were there. And yeah, but that was Ed Fagan. That was Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was Norris. <laughs> that was that faggot. Because they oh. said the feds you come down Fagan. one road and uh, Ray's uncle. They, oh. Ray's uncle went out the other road right <laughs> through the gates. <laughs> and he had a new car. <laughs> but the rings were there when she sold that part of the, the river property to float right. Mm -hmm. uh, the rings and all that were still there in the corner. The rings from the stills. Yeah. And they oh. used to get the water from, uh, well, there was a little, little miniature creek. <clears throat> and there was also uh, a spring there. I think that's why it was called Spring Street yeah. along there. Well, there was. Uh, and then we'd go down on Myers' land, uh -huh. uh, down on Mason's there, and uh, we'd always, we'd fish along there and hunt, and we'd go down and they had a spring about that big, and we'd get down our hands and knees and drink out of there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Really? Probably a couple of frogs in there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Anna, you must have some more stories you're going to tell us. <coughs> Do you have any? Um, I heard something about a disappearing stairway in your house or in the barn. That was on the farm. Oh. The house. We had a disappearing <coughs> stairway and put the mash upstairs. And then, so we then, and then we had a hole through the wall mm -hmm. and then down the basement. And disappearing stairway, you know, one thing, you just push it up, up, and uh, nobody could see it, you know, oh, okay. in, the, in the bathroom. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was spring-loaded, uh -huh. and it'd go up into the ceiling just like one of them tiles. 
And then it pulled down, and then the stairway, it slide down, and you'd walk right up. Oh, oh. So nobody would know that, that no. there was a way to get up to the... She used to scare us half to death and tell us the grown wise coming. It meant the big black man. Oh, yeah. And he was from White Bear, and he had a great big sack, and he'd have two five-gallon jugs. And so we'd stand back and we'd watch him, and my dad had put a quart jar of moonshine there, and he'd sample it. Well, my God, he'd drink that much, enough to kill a horse. <laughs> and he'd take another drink, and he'd say, good. <laughs> and he wouldn't hardly talk, and he lost the money, and uh -huh. away he'd go. Uh -huh. But he, you know, that black, those black people were very nice to us. On Monday, they would take the kids, and they'd take them to bring them to a movie in the cities. And they, they would um, say, you know, to, to go to a show so that we'd have the day off, you know, that no kids, you know. You can tell them another story about where you had the restaurant. Remember Mrs. Christopher? Oh, yeah. There was a black woman. And, you know, this black woman, she was on the corner of the Plord's Field. And it was... In October, it was real cold, and she had a blanket over the corner, and uh, over the corner of the, uh, this field. And Dad said, well, you know, we can't leave that poor woman there. So uh, we decided we'll bring her in, and, and uh, we had uh, at, uh, at Anne's Cafe, there was a building there where, below the rest, and she said, well, you know one thing what we would do? You know that um, um, we had her there for I don't know how many years that we brought her and, and took care of her. Mm. That woman didn't have a penny. Really? No. I remember one time she, she counted her money and mm -hmm. she had like nine cents or 11 yeah. cents. Yeah. And Did she work in town or? or? No. I don't know where she She ever, was from Augusta, Wisconsin. Anyway, well, what happened, they threw her out. She was trying to pay her rent, uh -huh. and she just had pennies. Uh -huh. And they threw her out, and then she moved out in the country and was living in the field. Mm -hmm. And it was getting cold in the fall, when my dad says, I don't care if they're colored people or not, you can't treat them like that. That's wonderful. So then they took her in, and they said, well, that was Ma's maid to help out. Okay. <clears throat> she was there for quite a while. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, she was she there for quite a while. while. How about stories we heard at the terrace about uh, the other gunshots from the uh, renowned... Oh, you mean from Dillinger Dillinger's gang, gang or the... Face Nelson? Um, <laughs> yes, and I think I've heard you say that you met Al Capone. Al Capone, I was working at the terrace nightclub. And... Uh, no. No, and the... I met Al Capone, I'm trying to think. They came to gamble at the terrace. The terrace was a big gambling joint, and you know, whenever they, they, they came, they had dancers in the back, they had gambling in the front, and they had, there was Jack Rowley. I got the pictures of Jack Rowley, Allie, Allie Parnell, Jack Rowley, <coughs> Ben and, and Dave Rowe, and uh, so uh, they were the gamblers. And Al Capone comes in, uh -huh. and you know what, they, they had a mistress. Big Mary was their mistress. And anyway, that they did, they, they, um, uh, when they, they came, um, you know, that uh, they would stop there to gamble and get money. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, this is how I met. And, um, uh, this big mistress, Mary, she had a, a, a mink cape that was about that wide, and it came down to her knees. And um, Al Capone and, and, and um, them, they, uh, they had velvet coats, and they had black velvet hats. Mm -hmm. What was your impression of Al Capone? Did Al Capone, I got scared. Oh. <laughs> You know, anyway. people don't know this, but Al Capone and them used to stay in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they had a, it's, well, it's in the history books. They had a known deal. You don't bother our people, we won't bother you. So the cops never bothered them. In St. Paul. In St. Paul. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And they also used to go up to uh, Yellow Lake at the Yellow Lake Lodge. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, that baby face Nelson used to run with Al Capone. Oh, he yeah, was baby. here that one time. He was said. a little short guy, and he was he was fat, real fat. He was a little short guy. I, I bet you he weighed, must have weighed about um, 300 pounds, <laughs> and he maybe five feet six, five feet. And what was the big Mary like, the mistress? Mary was kind of. T tall and um, she diamond rings and, and rings she had rings that were so busy enough to choke the horse oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, anyway that and you said there I, I think you've talked about some dancing at at uh, the terrace or oh yeah and <laughs> Mary Lou Burl, she was going to sneak on them one day just to see what they look like yeah, oh, okay. Uh, uh, when Al Capone and them were there. So they had barrels in the back of the terrace. And the barrels in the back of the terrace started flowing down and they made a lot of noise. <laughs> and here the guys come out with guns and everything like that, you know. <laughs> and then and uh, this uh, this is how Big Mary and the, and them were. So they, they were hiding behind the barrels, except then they were found. Mary Lou, Mary Lou came and spied on them. <laughs> See, the, who was... Uh, uh, um, who was there. Yeah. 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 Now you, um, I think you talked about some dancing, um, that there was some dance contest at the there terrace? There was a dance contest at the terrace nightclub when they first started. And the dance, my aunt Rose from St. Paul, my mother's sister, was one of the dancer, and she danced with John and and Drew? Jermaine. What's the, not oh, the, Andy Jermaine. Andy Jermaine. She yeah, danced they used with to Andy dance Jermaine. All night. This was a dance to see how long you could dance right. around yeah. the clock. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She danced with Andy Jermaine, and then you know one thing: the crooks. What they did, they took. The money when Andy was supposed to be pay, they were supposed to pay Andy five hundred dollars, and here they didn't have enough money. <laughs> he won the prize, but yeah. he, didn't no, he get won money. the prize, but he didn't get the money. No, no, he didn't get the money. Well, him and uh, I said no what's her name was dancing and won the contest there too. Uh, uh, oh, Lowell's wife. Virgie? Uh, no, no. Lowell, uh, they lived up in, up at uh, Turtle Lake there. Robard. Robard. Lowell Robard. Robard. His mother. Pearl. Her and Andy Pearl. used to go. Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, Pearl. And they were talking about the walkathon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. walkathon. Walkathon. Yeah. Walk yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he also did that dancing deal. He won that. He yeah. got paid for one and not for the other. My dad was in that also. Yeah, but was they, they? Mm -hmm. but he Were you in there me. too? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> um, and uh, then there was some other kind of dancing that went on there too, right? Besides mm -hmm. these contests that had prizes? Well, they and um, they would come and dance. Uh, it was on um, uh, when uh, they had um, the dinners and that, mm -hmm. you know. And they, they, it's just like a, you know, this nightclub had dancing and eating and, and all this here, all in the same place in the same. They came from all over the country to go to the terrace and the yep. palms. And the palms. Yep. 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 They come from miles and miles around. Especially on weekends because there was no drinking in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then Somerset was famous for frog legs, oh, so yeah. they'd come here. Yeah. Well, that's how us kids made money when we were kids. That was All the frogs we could catch, they'd buy every penny's worth. Uh huh. How much did you get for them? What? How much did we get? I think it was 50 cents a dozen, and that was a lot of money. <laughs> you know, uh, Gus Bile no, had the frog leg mm -hmm. farm. And he lived uh, out of town, and um, he had uh, uh, he would sell frogs, uh, all dressed and everything, and um, uh, they and of course they did serve them in the at the palms in the nightclub, you know the different um, uh, 
steakhouse around. Mm -hmm. They used to, when they couldn't get frogs around here, you know where they came from? Yeah. Larry Dallas and them uh, run them across the border at night from Minnesota. Oh, from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, were, you, you couldn't sell frogs. Uh -huh. And there was just, we had an uncle in Glenwood, Minnesota, and there was just literally millions of frogs around the pond. Great big frogs. They try to get them what they call 12, 14 count to a pound. Oh, wow. And then they put them in cold water and it blows them all up. A frog mm -hmm. like that big will get almost the size of your thumb. Mm -hmm. And then they saute them and excellent eating. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's the, they used to put overload springs on their old cars. And then they'd cross the border and the car would go nice and flat. So they figure, well, they're not bringing any illegal stuff over and here they'd have a ton of frogs in their car. <laughs> and then on the return trip they could take some moonshine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and both ways they were overloaded, right? <laughs> Very consistent. <laughs> oh yeah, well a lot of them had false bottoms on the trucks and that. And they'd look at the truck and there's a flatbed and then the sides had come down but underneath it had places almost like a milk truck had milk cans that go up here. Well, they'd have places to put it underneath. Then the sides of the truck went down. You'd have to crawl under like that to put them in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then during the Depression and that, they kept most of it. When they figured it was a raid, it'd be in the basement at the priest's house. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there was all kinds of stories. <laughs> Our uncle one time, they... About the time that they took Dad, that for, they hijacked Dad, they, we were making moon. And then they took them um, um, halfway to Hudson, and Uncle yeah. Xavier went and picked them up. <laughs> yeah. One time they went out here to my uncle's, and they said, uh, we walked the railroad tracks, and we found a still there. What do you know about it? Well, he says, sure, I know that. Well, how do you know that? Well, that's mine. <laughs> so they put them up in Sandstone, Minnesota for what? <laughs> Uncle Edmund, three months? <laughs> you know that um, uh, when um, they had um, like, uh, another time they went to a wake up in the Richmond. It was about 25 below zero, and our uncle was cooking moonshine in the big swamp past the river's edge here, where Joel Rivard lives today. And from the top of the Biles Hill, you could see that just like a smokestack right in the middle of the swamp. Mm -hmm. And they said, shut everything down, the feds will be coming from miles around. <laughs> but, but you know something they had when, when the bootlegging days, when you had them, uh, they had moon running from the top of them, uh, the, uh, well, that would be the post office today running down the street. Yes, we had the moon running. Uh, well, that's the feds. The feds, when the feds were coming, and they figured the feds were going to be raiding the place, you know, so that. Well, at one time, they had tipped the truck over right on your street. The local people said they're not going to let the feds get away with that, so they tipped the truck over and wrecked all the stuff and the old guys they said were drinking moonshine <laughs> with tin cups. And it was about 20 below and it was running down the gutters. <laughs> and it was running. <laughs> it wasn't frozen. <laughs> well, they were thirsty little guys. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to waste a good thing. <laughs> Why don't you tell them, tell them about the old Professor Fritz that came from uh, oh, Germany he, and Vienna. Yeah, he would play the organ at Andy's bar and he was a wonderful player. You should have seen how he would play the... And it was, you know, when he got done playing, 2 o'clock in the morning, he would come to our house. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We'd see him. He was drinking coffee at the table when, the, when at, at the house. He played with the biggest orchestras in the world. Uh -huh. And uh, right about when the Second World War started, he was he came from Vienna and Austria, and they tried to put him on these merchant ships to get them and the, the well, it'd be the nuns and all that out of uh, different countries in uh, Germany, Japan, or not uh, it'd be. Germany and Belgium and that part of the world. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they were uh, before they took him, they they captured him and they crushed all his fingers. But even with his hands that bad, he could play that organ and just unbelievable. Okay, so he then he escaped from. He escaped and he, escaped he jumped, from, got on a merchant France. ship. Mm -hmm. And one time, uh, our priest let him play the organ at uh, ten o'clock mass, and you never heard anything like that in your life. You'd swear the top of that church was going to go right off. He played, you know, most of the people play the organ; they play it real soft. He had all ten fingers in that organ, and he had that thing just screaming. Jeez. I wonder why he was um, why he was captured and and tortured like that. Any anybody uh, that uh, that seemed to be a professional, they killed. Oh, because he was a professional. Right, and, and uh, he had a sister up here at Willow River, Minnesota, going up on the interstate, mm -hmm. and my brother Andrew and I brought him up there to see his sister. She had escaped with them from Germany. And they must have been in the resistance, somehow resisting the Well, the I suppose, but uh, there was a lot of them, people that were professionals, they were mm. doctors and everything, and rather than capture them and have them work for them, they just they just kill them, torture them. Was he Jewish? Huh? Was he Jewish or had a... I think he was Jewish. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. But I remember uh, we'd go into Andy's bar here, and one would be on the piano, and <laughs> Professor Fritz would be playing the organ. And boy, it was really uh, something to hear. I mean, you so just. That was probably then during World War II, or shortly after World War II. Oh, that'd be about in fifty. 50, 49, 50, 51. Okay. And later. later. Yeah, well, even later. Did you have ever played fiddle with him? He played. Oh. He used to play at the River's Edge. Oh, so that would have been. Another thing you forgot to tell him, how about the bands and that, yeah. that, that. Uh, Middle 50s. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because I know him and I came in town in 59, uh, 57. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he was going strong then. Mm -hmm. Oh. He was giving concerts at the Andy's bar. Right. He was. One day during the afternoon, he was in there and the doors were open. It was in the summertime. And he was playing the Lord's Prayer. And I mean, it was lasting. Uh huh. It was beautiful. How wonderful. It was just. Well, he could really play. Oh, yeah. Well, one of his problems was he liked his liquor a little bit too much. Well, that's he would right. go up in the choir in the church in yeah. St. Anne's and he had this bottle right with him and he would drink it during Mass. <laughs> <laughs> there's spirits and then there's spirits, right? <laughs> Dad used to play uh, all kinds of instruments. He'd play the violin and the juice harp and... Yeah. They the, had, well, the family did. Yeah. Uncle Ernest was a singer and... Um, Dad played the violin. Yeah, he played the juice harp. Who? The juice harp. The Bob. Yeah. Bob. And uh, I don't remember. They had an orchestra that was late. Oh. Yeah. Now, you spoke French when you were a child? Yes. And when. Bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Je venu ici pour vous voir aujourd'hui. Bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Now, what did you say? Merci pour venir. Mais moi, je pour dire ma vie, je veux ma vie que je. Merci beaucoup. Can you tell me what you were just singing? Thank you very much. It's thank you, my friends. Thank you. I'm glad that you came today to see me. I said, thank you, my friends. Thank you for coming. When we started school, we couldn't even speak English. And when was that? When well, was that? Yeah. 41. 41? I'm just wondering, when when did Somerset make the transition from French to English? Well, they were teaching both French and English. In the 40s? In the 40s. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And Mass I'd, was in French? I'd say. Mass oh, yeah. at St. Anne's was yeah. in French? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mass when, was in French. Uh, when did it change to Latin? When was the change Oh, I English? suppose in about 50, 48, 49, 50, 51, back it's they started... Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, they'd probably speak a little bit at the homily in French and then a little bit in English and then it went to For English. For mass. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I think Joe Janke told me that it went from French to Latin and then to English at, at the Mass. Well, it did go to Latin. Go, it went to Latin and then... Well, Morris, you remember, Dad, uh, there was a lot of Latin. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought the Mass was in Latin. Yeah. And the well, sermons and that Well, was there was French and Latin. But mainly it was Latin. The canon of the Mass. Right, mass. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, now, um, so many people spoke French here. Um, did, um, was the school teaching, uh, at St. Anne's School, were they teaching in French? Well, or French and English. Uh, French and English. Right. And the public school was all in English? That then? was all English. Okay, okay. I don't ever remember any French there. I know, when I came but in 68, we had all English at the public school, right? When Anne Marie started school, and you know that Hail Mary, she was going to say Hail Mary in, in um, English. She didn't know how to say it in English. She don't, knew only how to say it in French. Uh -huh. So the school, so, so sometime maybe in the 50s, late 40s, late early 40s, 50s, I'd things, say. things started to change. Over because something. we had Sister Regina and Sister Clements and all them, and they, uh, well, they taught us in English and French, both. <coughs> so can you still say something in French? Oh, pas les flansats tout le temps. Which means? Which means talk French all the time. Oh. <laughs> we went on a cruise down in the South Sea Islands, and I was the interpreter. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> they tried. They tried to rip us off, and we were out in the, out of Montego Bay, and the taxi stopped in front of us, and Archie says they want a hundred and some dollars. Well, I said we made the agreement for twenty dollars. So they were talking French to beat heck, and Milton Vanoss was with us, and well, I think Maxine's husband, Johnny, and it was a whole bunch of us, and mm -hmm. so I went and I talked to him. I said, we're going to knock him, knock you in the head. I told him in French, and throw you in Montego Bay, and they'll never find you. So everything was settled, and off we went. <laughs> they were talking Do you speak the real French, then, or Canadian? Well, that was uh, the Canadian French. More, more of the French yeah. like they do down in Louisiana and that. Yeah. But I could, I could understand them. It was Ash Wednesday and they had a parade and they were coming down the roads and they had spears and they were, they were going along and I was out there. I said, well, I'm going to go dance with them. <laughs> and uh, this one old woman was co uh, cooking uh, pork. And she says, va-t'en, mange les cochons. Hey, bon cochon, bon pour toi. She says, come on and eat some pig, it's good for you. <laughs> she had a little piece of tin like that, and she had a little charcoal fire, and she mm -hmm. was cooking pork out there. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose if you give them a dollar, they thought they were rich. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> now, um, you also had Anne's Cafe here in Somerset. Can you tell I, us about that? I started Anne's Cafe. And um, uh, I was there for only four years. Then I broke my hip, and um, uh, I um, uh, sold the cafe to Joe and Dee Foster. And Joe died of a heart attack, and Dolores had the cafe for 35 years. And why did you start the restaurant? I started the restaurant because I always liked it. See, I cooked for the warehousers, and I cooked for the terrorists, and I had cooked for so many places. And really, what did I know but cooking? And, and um, you know, um, that's all I knew about my life. Mm -hmm. Well, she did that after she sold the dairy out. Yeah. Right. Disperse the dairy. Didn't your husband, didn't Theodore die and yeah, uh, just before my, you started the restaurant? Yeah, my, yeah. He yeah. died on my birthday in 1958. Oh, 1958. And went yeah. down to see him and I met the ambulance and here he had just died. Mm. August yeah. 15th. Wow. And you know that um, uh, I had, um, after he died, I had, um, uh, I took a, a ticket from St. Anne's Church. I was just going to tell you to tell about that. In the ticket from St. Anne's Church, I won a thousand dollars, 
And a thousand dollars was a lot of money. Oh, was then that a they, raffle? Or? Right. Yeah, it was at the big ticket. bazaar they have. They get big, oh great. Yeah. They must have got ten thousand people there. And that was a big raffle. You know. she, we went down there and she says, Who won? I says, You did. She says, You're crazy. I says, They just drew your name, you won. Yeah. <laughs> and she needed the oh. pen. she needed every penny of it to help pay the bills. That was that was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Money from nice. heaven. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, um, then you started to ask if you worked for the Weyerhausers and others for some years, and then it, started yeah, your own restaurant. Yeah, that that was before I started Anne's Cafe. Mm -hmm. And I worked for J.P. Weyerhausers. I had seven maids under me, and you know one thing, I, uh, and I said, to, I had private room. I ordered flowers. I ordered everything. And so I said to Mrs. Warehouser, I said, there's a little girl, and this little girl was deaf. And so Mr. Warehouser said, has this little girl been, we didn't know if she'd been kidnapped or not. We had police patrol on the lake and everything. And I said, do you know one thing? I said, no, she's sleeping with me. And he said, thank God, thank God. He said, she's sleeping with you. And um, so anyway, they wanted me to, um, they wanted the, me to be the uh, head maid. And they said, well, we're scared of Mr. Warehouser. Scared of Mr. Warehouser? He's just like anybody else. So one Friday, I said, Mr. Warehouser, I said, would you like a, a grilled cheese sandwich? And he said, I'd love a grilled cheese sandwich. I said, sit down. I said, I'll make you a grilled cheese sandwich. So he sat down and had a grilled cheese sandwich with us. And then when the, they, uh, they moved out, well, it, we had police patrol on the lake all the time. Where was this because, at? You know, the well, where was this? Right where, Delwood. Oh, Delwood. Yeah. Oh, okay. White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they White had the lake. police patrol on the lake all the time because, you know, on the car. And they, the, the, the police would come and they flashed their light. You know, they knew that it was okay. Okay, that was a signal. Yeah, mm -hmm. signal. How long did you work for them? I worked for them for a year, and then I went to Washington to see them. And um, I worked more than a year. I worked I two years. I thought it was a couple of years. Yeah, two years <clears throat> for them. And then I went to Washington to see them. And the Lisa Warehouser, she said, you know one thing? She said, you can go now. She said, we got Anna back. She said, Anna's here. Anna's here. And uh, she loved me like, just like her mother. She called me mom all the time. She called me mom. I think we can all understand why. <laughs> right, those kids were milking cows when we were five, six years old. Oh, yeah. I'll bet. Yeah. Before you went to school. They had, oh, yeah. We'd have to feed yeah. the pigs and milk the cows. And How many cows? Oh, I suppose the most we had was probably 20 there. Was that when you had the dairy? Yeah. Ah. And then we had, uh, one time we had two herds. So I was going to stay home from school and I ended up milking 40 some cows that one morning. <laughs> <laughs> and did you decide to go back to school the next day? <laughs> yeah. I can remember one time when um, we always called her Grandma Anna had a, had a birthday party for Tommy and we were all young. And Tommy was away at school, I think, at that time, wasn't he? He used to go to Delavan, and yeah. later years he went to Eau Claire Deaf yeah. School. And then when he came home, I, I don't remember, but it had to be in the summer. It was, it was nice out. And anyway, she'd invite all of us kids from town for his birthday. And I have never in my whole life <coughs> seen so much food. Oh, <laughs> It was like a smorgasbord, and you know, we weren't used to that. I mean, we had our meals, sit-down meals, but she had fruits and, and fruit salads, different kinds of salads, and she had different kinds of meats and different kinds of, of um, cakes and pies. And I, I came home and I told my mother, I said, I have never seen anything like that before. She commented it all it was, herself. She did. She did it. Well, before they were telling about a birthday party that you had for Tom. And you invited all the kids from the from town, and you had this huge amount of food, smorgasbord of all kinds yeah. of food. Oh yeah, talking about oh, well, what a good cook you were. Well, do you know one thing? 
all my life, I cooked all my life, and that was my main thing to do. And I, you know one thing, we set the table, nice white tablecloth, and we had flowers and everything on the table, and we had the, uh, the kids said, well, how come that your mother can make all those pies, can do all this here, and everything. So I made, had six, seven different kinds of pies, and I said, we had the chicken, we had the turkey, I don't remember what else, and dressings and mashed potatoes and gravy and then, and, but you know what? Like that, and like I said, the, our house was everybody's home. You know? Sometimes we'd serve 30, 40 people for dinner on Sundays. What is your favorite dish to cook? What is your favorite thing to make? What's your favorite dish or food to make? I love everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, food. my favorite food. Food, 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 food. Oh, I don't know. Right now she makes great cheesecake. And oh, she, she makes still does that homemade. Homemade cheesecake. Yes. She's Yet. Got one in the freezer right now. She just made three. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. Pies was I'll be right over. Really <laughs> I made pies for WCCO. I made pies for everybody. And um, yeah, but tell them what that one guy did down the street. You made pies for the guy at WCCO. The guy down the street went and picked up the pies and ate them all. <laughs> oh. yeah. But you know one thing. Well, that, that, you know, like I said, that happens. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but I did make pie for WCCO now. And they said, do you think Ann would make me a pie? And I said, well, if Ann is going to make you a pie today, she's going to cheat. Because I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to buy the pie crust and open and open the and open the the, the can. The can. <laughs> During the 40s, before there was a, a skating rink in town, where the sewer plant is, we had a big lake there, and we'd keep it clear, and the kids would all come from town. They'd go skating, and then they'd go into the house. It was like a restaurant. They'd have. Sure. Cake we, and uh, we, hot chocolate. And hot chocolate. Well, whatever you want. It was nothing. It was nothing for five gallons of hot chocolate to, to, to go through. Yeah. Well, I, I do remember Betty Plair telling me how wonderful you were when she first was married and came to town. Oh yeah. And you were such a wonderful neighbor to her. Oh, I love Betty Plair. Betty Plair was a wonderful person to me. Well, everybody's been good to me, oh, well, so I can't say that not that everybody's been wonderful to me. Well, I, I, said, I can understand why they wanted to enjoy your good food. <laughs> right? That's why she had to start a restaurant. Well, there's times, I'll bet you, on Sundays where we set that big table like three times. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That, that's amazing. That now, does a big any, table. Does anybody have a favorite story that they'd like to have Anna tell? Oh. Go ahead. Not that Anna would. I did. Uh, oh. When Anna, she talked about the strawberry, two acres of strawberries she had. The, yes. And uh, so in the summer, the kids would go pick strawberries for her. And this one time, of course, we all wore hand-me-downs, and I happened to have white pants on. So I, Earl Kluger, he brings that up. Well, he died a couple years ago, but he brought it up every, every year, every time he sees me. He says, uh, you're going to pick strawberries today. And the story is that my knees were all red from <laughs> squishing the, the strawberries, and Anna fired me. Oh, <laughs> he's telling about the day that he picked strawberries in white pants, and he got the knees of the white pants all red, and you fired him from picking strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that well, might that, wasn't that bad, was it, Jerry? <laughs> well, you know what happened? They hired this local guy to hold the strawberries. Mm -hmm. And this was back in the 30s. I mean, there was no money, and it was all it was was 50 cents a day. So my dad went over the hill, and he figured, well, I better go check on him. Well, he goes down there, and here he chopped all the strawberries off. My dad says, what the heck are you doing? He says, you said to hold the strawberries. So he was chopping up all the plants. Oh, dear. Rather than chopping between the yeah, rows of rather strawberries. Rather than weeding them, he was literally chopping the rows up. Oh, oh. Oh, the other stories? Yes? Yeah, if you wanna if you tell her you like something, she's gonna rattle off the recipe right out of that head. Oh, okay. <laughs> she will. We'd like you to tell us a recipe for something. What what kind of recipe would we like her to have? Yeah, tell cake, her. <laughs> cake? A cake. Can you give us a recipe for a cake? Okay, I open up a box <laughs> and 
and I just have to mix it and put it in the oven, and that is my cake. <laughs> what about a cheesecake? A cheesecake. Oh, I still make a cheesecake. Okay. I got one. That, I What's got the recipe one. for the cheesecake? <laughs> Packages of Philadelphia. Well, it don't have to be Philadelphia. It can be like any cream, cream cheese. cheese. Mm -hmm. Two and six eggs and I don't. I don't remember. Uh, some sugar. Is there some sugar? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sugar. I don't remember. I don't remember, you know, one thing, I got the recipe, if, if I got the recipe, it's in, I have to yeah. check the cookbook. <laughs> but um, I, I made, I got a cheesecake the other day, because I made one, because in case that, uh, um, you know, there's always somebody around. <laughs> when we were on the farm, we had uh, rows of uh, canned goods, like all these shelves here. 2,500 quarts of canned goods that I would can, and Helmer Olson came over to the house and he said, hey, I think I'm gonna be coming over this winter. He said, because he said, all these shelves, we had bought um, uh, all the shelf from C.J. Mounty's store. You know, um, we had um, three stores in town. We had Lagrange's store, we had the Vanessa store, we had the and um, uh, the meat market, Parnell, had, yeah, had and then we and then we had the um, a CJ, <coughs> C, CJ started the store in the corner uh, on the other side, so um, uh, we um, so you could supply the stores in the winter time, right? <laughs> you had enough food there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them were two quart jars too, uh -oh. not just a quart or a pint. Well, if you're going to feed all of the kids in the village, you're going to have to be prepared. Right, yeah. Mother, did you tell them how much we used to can in the fall? How much yeah, did you can in the fall? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, she's what, what I can today comes out of a, the store. <laughs> oh, <No. laughs> <No. laughs> well, when you had the farm. When you had the farm. You oh, 2,500 2,500 quarts. 2, 500 quarts. Mm -hmm. We had uh, CJ closed his um, his um, store, so I bought all the shelf from CJ's store, and they they had the shelves of for near half as oh, about oh, this long. They were longer than that. Yeah. They were right yeah. up to the ceiling, eight yeah. foot ceiling, and yeah. they were oh like from that chair to there, and then the back one, and then we had a bend there. We'd fill about that thick with potatoes, yeah. and we'd buy uh, like pick up loads of potatoes. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, how about the offer you had when you sold the old farm down by the river when the rows and them all wanted to start flow right? How about when, tell them the story about how you had your choice of the money for your old farmland down on the river and you took the money instead of being half owner of float right and then you went and bought the cafe? Oh, yeah. And I had them. It must have been about where the float right is today. I must have had about, um, oh God, must have 40 acres, 30 acres we yeah, had there? 40 some acres. 40 some acres? Yeah, I think like 42, 45. Yeah. And, and they the wanted to buy it from you? It, well, the float right did okay. buy it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that's where I went back and bought Ann's Cafe. Okay. So they gave her an option, she could have taken a share of the flow drive. Uh huh. Yeah. And but in them days, she needed the money. Sure. For sure. the restaurant and mm -hmm. other investments. Who did you buy the building from, Anna? Who did you buy the restaurant from? I bought the restaurant from John Belil. I traded the restaurant for, what they have? Six, 80, 80. 80. 80 acres of land that was owned by Dickus. By Dickus. Oh, and okay. I and I traded the farm for it. We had that farm we had bought out. And that's there. where I started the Anscope. No, oh, no, no. Okay, okay. Out, out of town here. Oh. Well, um, our yeah. presentations, our talks are usually about an hour long, and we've we've um, completed about an hour. So we'll wrap up this section. But if people have questions or want to look at the pictures, 
we uh, invite you to come over and look at the pictures and tell everybody stories and, and share memories. And thank you very much for coming. And thank, thank you, Anna. Anna.